Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 1006. Let's turn to it. Page number 1006 from number 19. Let's see what we have there. In number 19 we are given a triangle that looks something like this. We are told that this is a right angle, that this is a right angle, Whatever this angle is, is being bisected, is being cut into two equal parts. A very, very important piece of information that we will use in a second. This angle we are told is 60, or 30, this angle we are told is 60, and we are told that this side is 12. And that is all, that is all that is given to us. The question simply is, what, what is the length of A to D? I lost the page, give me a second. There you go. How much is A to D? Let's see what we can do. A to D is what we're looking for right here. This, this, this right here. How much is it? Well, there are two ways we can go about it, and I'm going to show you both of them. First is this one. I'm going to use I'm going to use different color now, so that we can distinguish between what is given, what was given to us, and what we're going to add to it. So here we go. Because this is 90 degrees, and as I already said, because it's 90 degrees, it's dropping a perpendicular, which means this angle B is being cut into equal halves, two halves, two equal halves. Obviously, there are no two unequal halves, two halves, two equal halves is being redundant. We are told that this, ang this angle is 30, which means this angle must also be 30, it has to be 30. If this angle is 30 and this angle is 30, this entire angle is 60 degrees. This is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, which means this would have to be 60 degrees. That's all. In other words, in other words, the triangle that you're looking at, ABC, triangle ABC, is an equilateral triangle. Because all the sides are 60. This is 60, this is 60, and this is 60, and this is 60, this would have to be 60. And therefore it's an equilateral triangle, which means all the sides are equal to 12, because this side is 12. B to C is 12, which means A to B is 12 which means A to C is 12, and if A to C is 12, half of that is going to be 6. The answer is, how long is from A to D? The answer is 6. So that's one way of going about it. This is, this is I mean, in my opinion, more straightforward way. Another way is to use the 30, 60, 90 triangle that we have, and we can do that too. I'm going to show you in a second, even though I don't believe it's necessary, but in case you didn't see this part, here's another way. So this was not given to us. Let's erase all of this thing. So let's, let's begin the story from here. Let's pick up the story from here. The second method. The second method is very straightforward also. This is 30 degrees we are told. This angle is 90 which means this angle must also be 90 because it's a straight line. If this is 90 and this is 30 this has to be 60. So now we look at triangle not triangle ABC, not ABC, we just look at ABD. Triangle ABD is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, there are three, this is how, this is how I remember it, this is, this is a mnemonic device I use for myself. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, there are three different, three different types of angles, 30, 60, and 90. So I write down 1, 2, and 3. This is what I do. And then we put the root sign on the last one. And you simply arrange them. 1, 2, and root 3. The highest among them is 2. Highest among them is 2. So this is 2. The smallest one is 1, which, which faces the smallest angle, which is 1. And this is going to be root 3. Now, question is, what's the multiplying factor? Well, that multiplying factor is right here. This is 12. If this is 12, this would have to be 12 also. This would have to be 12 also because this is 60 and this is 60. Without even looking at this part, even if 
this is 60 and this is 60 that makes it at the very least an isosceles triangle. If this is 12, that is 12. Well, how do we make 12? Multiply it by 6. Multiply this by 6. Multiply that by 6. And that's all there is. In other words, the side A to B is 12, same as this one. Side B to D is 6 times root 3, even though nobody is asking, nobody is asking us for that. What we are being asked is how long is A to D? The answer is A to D is 1 times 6. So that was number 19. And like I said, that method turns it into a, a real saga, a real story. Just use the equilateral triangle. In number 20, we are given the graph of y as a function of time. Now typically, when we write something as a function, the tradition, the tradition is is to use the letter f for function. Function simply means a relationship between two variables. And the name that we give to that, to that relationship traditionally, in an orthodox manner, is to use the letter f. Here, for some strange reason, you're using letter d to, to denote the function. The name of the function is d. And you will see in a second why they're using d. There's a reason for it. So, so that's the function. It says the graph y equal to dt represents what? What does it represent? My handwriting is just I think I miss I, I think I spell it correctly. So here are the two pictures that are given to us. One is a, a wheel that is given sitting here. This is the center and here is the point on the wheel. And it's going clockwise forward. It's rolling forward going clockwise. And here's the other graph. On the x-axis we have the time and on the y-axis we have this quantity y. The question is what is that quantity y? What is it measuring? Here's, here's the graph. And so forth. Let's go through all all the answer choices one by one and see why as we go through them why three of them are obvious wrong answer choices. Here's answer choice A. Answer choice A says that it, it is the speed of the wheel. Well, it could not be speed of the wheel because in the problem if you read it carefully it tells us that the, that the wheel is rolling on the ground at a constant speed. So no matter what time it is, whether we look at it 5 seconds from now or 10 seconds from now or 20 seconds from now or 30 hours from now, the speed is constant. So if you were to plot that graph, that graph would some this is time. If, if this y actually did represent speed, if it did represent speed, the graph would have been like this. It's a constant speed. It never changes. No, no matter what time is, 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 is rolling at a constant speed, we are told. And that is obviously not, that is not this, this graph. So obviously it is not measuring this graph, it's not measuring the speed. The y that is there is not speed, it's something else. The answer A is wrong. Let's see what B is. B says it is the distance, it is the distance from the starting point. Well, it's not the distance from the starting point, but because had it been the distance from the starting point, if this time and this y, at, when the time when time is zero, it has traveled no distance. At one at the end of one second, it has traveled some distance. At the end of two seconds, it has traveled some other distance. Even though the slope is constant, at at the end of third seconds, it has traveled some other distance. The graph would have been like this, and the slope of this graph would, would show the speed. But the graph would be like this: the more time you travel the more distance you travel. The y is the distance here. And that is not that graph. In this case, y would have been the distance. And that's not it. Had, if y had been the distance, the graph would have looked like this. Let's look at C. C says it is the distance of the mark of the mark on the rim from 
on the center. But the distance of this mark here from the center, the distance, distance of the mark on the rim, which is this mark here on the rim, to the center, that represents the radius. This is the radius of the wheel. And the radius of the wheel does not change as time goes by. Whatever the radius was in the beginning, that remain radius is going to be the same 10 seconds from now, 20 seconds from now, and 20 years from now. Again, if you were to plot that one, this is time and this is the radius, this is the radius, it would have been flat, whatever the radius happens to be. It's, it's constant. That's not it. The answer is D. The answer is D. D says it is the distance. It is the distance of the mark on the rim from the ground. Not from the center, because the distance from the center always remains the same, whether this mark happens to be here or here, it's the same, it's the radius. It is in fact the distance of the mark, this mark right here, from the ground. You see? At the, at, the, at the time zero, this is the distance, which is the radius. This, this distance represents the radius. As it rolls forward, as it rolls forward, the, the mark comes over here, it's half the radius. Oh, sorry. Uh, in this case, is, is the distance from the ground is two times the radius. When it reaches here, whatever it is, halfway there is one time. When, it, when this mark ends up here, it becomes zero. Then again, when it reaches here, the distance is equal to radius. When it's up there, it's the diameter. Radius, it's on the ground, and so forth. It's moving forward, and this is the distance, the distance of this mark from the ground. It keeps going down, and then up again, down, and up again, as it rolls. The answer is D. Number 21. Number 21 says A minus B over A is equal to C. We are told that A is negative. And B is positive. That is given to us. The question is, based on that, what can we say about C? Because the four answer choices we are looking at they all involve C, they will have to tell us something about the C. Let's see what we can do. So, we are told that A is negative. So, A is negative minus, minus B, which we are told is positive, over A, which is also negative. So, let's find out what negative minus positive would be. Just make up something. If you have a negative 5 plus negative 5, minus negative 5 let's say we have minus some positive number what do you suppose it's going to end up being because this is minus and this is positive this positive and this this negative and this positive this negative and this positive makes that also negative which means we end up with negative 5 and negative 4 which is negative 9 in other words negative minus a positive quantity a negative quantity minus a positive quantity it's always going to be negative. And on the bottom we also have negative. Which means this quantity that we're looking at, A minus B over A, whatever it is, has to be positive. Because negative over negative is positive. It has to be positive. So what we establish is that C has to be more than zero. But we can say something more than that. Not only C has to be more than zero, which rules out See what we can rule out based on that. If D says C is less than 1, C is less than negative 1, C is equal to negative 1, which is also wrong. C is equal to 1. And what does A say? A says that C is more than 1. So we based, based on just the work alone that we have done so far, and realizing that C has to be positive, we can match out C and D. The question is, answer is either A or B. The question is, can, 
can c equal can c equal to one? The answer is not. Answer is no. C is not equal to one because the low the top part the denominator is smaller than the denominator. It is a minus b. So a smaller quantity divided by divided by a large quantity over a. C has to be more than one. C cannot be equal to one. C has to be more than one. How can C? The only way C can be equal to one is if the top is same as the bottom, which is not the case here. So that was number twenty-one. Number twenty-two. Number 22, we are, call, we are told that we have a representative class. Representative class simply means that whichever class that we are looking at, this particular class, happens to be a very typical class in this state. It is not something out of the ordinary. No, there is no, it's a very typical, very ordinary class that you will find typically in any school of this grade, whatever the grade happens to be, 8th grade class. And it consists of 26 students. We are told that 34.6% have at least two siblings. That is, they have two or more. Two or more. That will, that's what at least two means. In this class, 36 points, 34.6 percent of the kids have at least two siblings. What that also means is that approximately 65 percent. I'm, I'm going to pretend that this is 35 percent, just to keep our math simple. 65 percent have only one sibling. That's what that means. This, that's what that implies. If 35% of the kids have at least two siblings, which means two or more, which means 65% approximately of the class must have only one sibling. Let's see what they're asking. The question is very straightforward. The question is, and we have 1800, 1800 such classes in this state. This is a very typical class. There's nothing out of the ordinary about it. We are told that already in the beginning it is a, it is a representative class. It is a represent, representative class of the, in the state. And we are further told now that there are 1800 classes like that in this state. The question is how many, how many, how many eighth graders that we are talking about have, have only one sibling. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Because we already know 65% of them have one sibling. 65%. So here's what's going on. Okay? As, I, as I remind you every once in a while as we're doing the problem, you must always keep in mind, always remember, always remind yourself that we are only taking SAT. We are not here to perform an open heart surgery. Precision is not required. Our job is to not figure out what the exact answer is. I, I don't care what the exact answer is. I just want to be able to recognize the right answer. Our job is to be able to recognize the right answer among the four. We don't have to know the exact answer. So if you take liberty, it's fine as long as it's reasonable. So I'm going to take liberty one more time. First time we took the liberty is that we pretended this was 35%. And if this is 35%, then this is 65%. I'm going to take the liberty one more time because I'm lazy. I don't want to figure out 30, 65%. I'm just going to pretend this is 60, 67%. In other words, we have gone from 65% to 67% because it's two thirds. In other words, I'm pretending that 65% is about two thirds, which is which it is. It's 66, 66 and one uh, two third percent. Do you understand? So this two third is coming from here. I'm approximating. I'm approximating 65% is two thirds, just to keep our math simple. So we'll see what happens. 
Because if you look at the answer choices, answer choices are all quite far apart. We should have no trouble at all being able to recognize the right answer, even if you approximate a little bit here and there. So there are, that's, that's two thirds. In other words, two thirds of the kids in the eighth grade in this state have only one sibling. There are 1,800 such classes. There are 1,800 such classes. And the question is, two thirds of what numbers? Well, two thirds of the 26 kids. But if it makes it easier for you, let's, let's do the other way around. Two thirds of the class, two thirds of the class has one sibling. But the question is, what's the size of the class? Well, the size of the class is 26. So two thirds of 26 have one sibling. And how many such classes do we have? Well, we have 1,800 such classes. Okay. Now you see why I wanted two thirds because it goes nicely with the eight. eight, eight. So let's do it here. Let's divide this thing. Uh, 18 has six, so it's 600. It's 600 times this amount, so let's do it here. 600 times 2 is 1200, 1200 times 26. We have to figure out 600 times 2 is 1200, 1200 times 26 is what we have to figure out. I'm going to do it here. So 26, 26 times 12, right here. So one more time, this 12 is coming from 2 times 6. We'll worry about the two zeros at the end, okay? And this is times 26. Let's do it together here. I know 12 times 5, 12 times 5, 12 fives are 60. I know 12 fives are 60 because 12 tens are 120. 12 times 10 is 120. Therefore 12 times 5 must be 60. 60 plus another 12 would be 72, which is 12 times 6. 12 times 6 is 72. 2 carries 7. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 plus 7. 24 plus 7. 24 plus 6. Would have been 30, so it's 31. It's 31, and now we add the two zeros. So I'm going to put them in a different color. Now we add the two zeros here, here, and here. These are these zeros. This zero and this zero that we have left behind. There you go, that's our answer. 31,200. Pick the one answer that comes closest to it, and I guarantee you there's going to be only one answer choices that will come close to 31,200, because that's how the game is played. And I'm going to give you two answer choices very close to this number. And if you look at the answer choices, the only answer choice that comes closest to 31,200 is 30,600. That's your answer. I'm sorry, C. 30, 31,600. 30, Even though we came up with 31,200 because we are overestimating it. We are overestimating it because we are lazy. Because we did not use the precise percentages. It's 34.6, which means... It's not even 35. So if you make this 35, this becomes 65. But even then, we did not use 65 percent. 65 percent would have been lower number because we used two thirds. Instead of using 65 percent, we ended up using almost 67 percent, which is why our number is a little bit higher. A little bit higher is okay because there is enough room there for wiggle. They are far apart enough. Obviously, if it's not 30,000, it's not going to be 46,000. It's definitely not 23,000. The answer is 30,600. We're going to stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll pick up where we left off. If you need to get hold of me, if you're preparing for the SAT and if you would like to hire me as your tutor, you can send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. I can help you with the math part, the grammar portion, which is the writing part, and I can help you with the vocabulary part. All right? Bye now. Watch the vocabulary videos. It will help you improve your score in the reading part. Bye now.